Okay, hello everybody, a warm welcome to episode 17 of A Kick in the Valley Eric's. Myself and Marty make peace. I'm in Mallorca, Martin's in Ibiza. Uh, looking blue sky and sunny there, Martin. It's not though, is it? No, it's That's not, there. mate. It's not. Yeah. It's absolutely <laughs> chucking it down, Richie. Chucking it, it down. It is. Jumpers for goalposts today, mate. I'm telling you. Blimey, it's a real chilly one out there today. Um, but we're both there. On our way to see our boys play football uh, today, Saturday, of course, Saturday, the 5th of December. Blimey, uh, nearly at the end of the year. And um, looks like it's going to be a good end of the year for Real Mallorca, Mark. What? Great link, what great link. A great link, Richie. Great link. Yeah, I mean... Uh, what do you expect? Exactly. Well, the, the funny thing was, Rich, this time last week, you said two massive games, didn't you? Two massive games. Um you know, defining moment of the season, I think, Richie, really, because uh, two of the closest competitors and, and six points out of six and, and two good wins, Rich. Yeah, I mean, um, Logroñez, yeah, sort of the, the game changed within four minutes because there was a penalty in four minutes, handball, player got sent off, and that pretty much, you know, made the game really for Mallorca. They pretty much dominated, ran out 4 0 winners. Logroñez were eighth at the time. They've slipped again because uh, they lost uh, in the midweek too. But, the, you know, the defining game was definitely Almeria. Almeria, you know, got a lot of money behind them um, and um, had won their last six games. You're know, going there and getting a 1 0 win in the 91st minute with an absolute. I don't know if you've seen the goal. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's got to be goal, goal of the month for sure, maybe goal of the season, isn't it? Over, a classic Pele overhead kick. Yeah, Chilena, as we call it over here in Spain, yeah. uh, overhead kick um, from Abdon Prats, of all people. You know, he's not been really getting a look in. He started at the beginning, was been on the subs bench, been out of the squad. Um, but um, he was, if you remember, but he was the he was the boy that basically got Mallorca up. He, he scored the third goal in the Deportivo playoff game. Oh, and he's a, he's a local boy, he's from Arta. And uh, the fans love him because he's just Mallorca through and through, you know. And um, it, it, a fantastic thing, I mean, you know. And you might you might think with that goal he might start uh, this weekend. Well, actually, they're playing Monday nine o'clock um, at yeah. home. So um, so yeah, he might well start. But yeah, it's listen, Mark. We, we're getting towards the end of the uh, the, uh, the 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 year, not the season, at the end of the year. And we sort of said at the, I remember saying at the beginning, you know. Always win your home games. See if you can get a point away. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really important. Mallorca have now played 16 of 110, lost, uh, sorry, lost one, drawn five. And that obviously that loss was the first game of the season against Rio. And since then, they've not looked back, scored 20. That's the second best in the league and conceded just three goals in 16 games. I think that's unbelievable. I mean, that, uh, that's to, to the, see that's that amount the, of goals. That's the key, Rich. I mean, looking at the stats. Uh, 20 goals scored. I can see Espanyol in second have scored 23. Um, yeah. Conceded eight. You know, goal difference of, of, of 15 and, and Mallorca. To only concede three three goals in 16 games is phenomenal, really. I mean, and that's that's where, I mean, we keep saying they're nicking one nils here and nicking points here. But it's quite easy to nick a, a win if you don't concede goals, isn't it? You know, there's always a chance that you're going to score a goal. Exactly, and there's always a chance, you know, you're going to get at least a point because your team's not conceding. Yeah. That, that's the really, really important thing. You know, coming uh, towards the, the end of December right now, uh, it's tight at the top, of course. We said this last week. Uh, Mallorca 35, Espanyol 33, Leganes 31. It's still those three teams yeah. that got relegated last year from, from La, La Liga. But I think what, for me, what's really key right now is that Huesca went up last year with 70 points. Yeah. Uh, they lost 14 games, Huesca, last year and finished top of Segunda, um, also that La Liga Segunda, we were going to call it La Liga Smart Bank. And Mallorca are halfway there already, 35 points, you know, lost one game. You know, not, I, want, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. No, but, no, you know. I mean, Richie, first of all, first of all, two things. OK, first of all, calm down. OK, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, but I agree that it is a, it's a defining week for Mallorca. I think they've really set their stall out. I think other teams now will understand that they're going to be very tough to play against. Um, you know, they, 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 they've put down a real marker. Secondly, can remember we said, as long as Mallorca is there or thereabouts at Christmas, there's a chance, yeah? Uh, they're not there or thereabouts, Richard, the top of the league, and, you know, they're, they're flying. However, we know that the wheels can come off at any time at this level of football. All it takes is one or two injuries or one or two bad results and the wheels can come off. So let's not celebrate too much, but uh, that goal by Abdon Prats, I think it, that could be the defining moment where you go to your, your one of your closest rivals and you not only eke out a win in the 97th minute or whatever it was, uh, it, it scored in a spectacular fashion. I saw it flashed up 
uh, on world, on a world football site as well. Yeah, so that that's kind of gone global. That uh, goal has as well. So defining moment in Yorkers uh, season. However, uh, as you say, only half a job has been done. Yeah, Castellon away, uh, sorry, home at Castellon this coming Monday at nine o'clock. Uh, could be another big game of the week after. They're playing Leganes away uh, Saturday the 12th of December, six o'clock. Uh, get through that and listen, homeward run for me, mate. Homeward run. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, 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 Richie, I'm not going to get the bunting out too quickly, mate. Uh, you know, so I think basically um, let's, Monday against Castellon is going to be interesting, mate, because we're still waiting for that banana skin, aren't we? Yeah, that, yeah, it, yeah, they're fourth bottom right now, yeah. uh, Castellon. You know, yeah, that that's the sort of you know, game you go to and you think, oh, yeah, it's three points, exactly. it's not a problem, do you know what I mean? And, exactly you know, that. We're still waiting for that banana skin. Which, let's face it, all teams at all levels have had this year, haven't they? Yeah, it doesn't matter yeah. if you're the top of the Premier League in England or the top of La Liga in Spain. They're all having these banana skin games. So let's hope this week... It's got to be a nailed on home win, Rich, isn't it? And every time we say that, I'm always concerned when I say a nailed on home win. So, you know, it's got to be a home win on that one. And as you said before, uh, you're going to get to Christmas. You've got Lega Leganes as well, as you mentioned, at the next game, which is going to be a very interesting game as well, away as well to Leganes. I mean, yeah. if they can get, if, and it's a big if, if they can get six points out of the next two games, we can have a good Christmas. Let's hope so. Um, let's keep uh, let's keep the good news going. Udi Abitha, another win for them last week against their uh, nearest rivals, Hercules. They won by one goal to nil. 93rd minute winner, a, a late winner like Mallorca, Mark. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, mate. Uh, and it's that it's that man Davo again. I, I don't know if you can remember, but when he was signed, I actually said there's massive hope for this for this boy. There was a bit of a buzz about him when when he was signed, uh, and at the end of the day, he's actually come up with the goods. Uh, you know, you know, very similar to the Mallorca, Mallorca story. Closest rivals, one of the closest rivals, nicking a last-minute winner. The writing's on, Richard, the writing's on the wall. It's got to be, hasn't it? This year, it's got to be. Come on. Well, I mean, in the position you're in, you know, you've played 6-1, 6. You've yeah. scored, I think it's 12, conceded 1. Yeah, yeah. Um, your manager said um, in the press conference, um, the substitutions helped us get to the last minutes of the match with plenty of options to find the decisive goal. So I think, you know, like Mallorca, squad sounds oh. good, squad sounds oh. positive. Yeah, you know, yeah. people coming on scoring goals like Abdon did for Mallorca. You know, uh, that's important. You know, and, and going forward, I, I can't see them slipping up. Listen, they're playing the now second place team, or Orihuela, I think it is. Orihuela. Uh, who lie second place, seven points behind you right now. So win that, you're 10 points clear. Yeah, game over, isn't it? It's got, I mean, it's got to be. Not just that, Richie, you know, with the new format as well. Short, short and first half of the season. You know, it's so important to get these early games out of the way. I can't see anything happening. However, you know, you're always worried when you say things like that because, uh, you know, at, at this level of football, things can change quickly. But it's got to be Udi all the way, mate. Um, tomorrow again, away to Orihuela, which is a close rival. A little bit like the New Yorker situation. Three points and I think we're home and home. Yeah, Oriella with the team that beat Peña Deportiva last week, actually, by one yeah. goal to nil. Peña, um, uh, Peña so, just can't score goals, Richie, can they? they can't no, mate, score there's goals their problem. The there's problem. their problem. You know, yeah. they're not scoring goals. Uh, what they scored? One? Is it in their in their, all their games so far? I think I think it is. They've just, they just got to find the net. The, um, <laughs> they've scored, they've, in six, listen, in six look, listen to this stat, Richie. In six games, they've got six points. They've scored one and conceded two. I mean, come on, that's an incredible stat for six games, isn't it? So uh, they can't score goals. However, you know, they're in that second tier, uh, uh, you know, because the, the leagues are in three tiers this year as well. Tier is the well-used word at the moment, isn't it? So they're in the still in the second tier, uh, six points. Uh, let's hope they stay there, but they need to score goals. That's the question. That's the thing. Yeah, we keep saying this, Mark, but if we could get Udi Abitha up and Atletico Belair is up to uh, La Liga Smart Bank, Mallorca could go up to La Liga oh. and then Udi Abitha and Peña Deportiva, sorry, Udi Abitha, Udi Poblense and uh, Peña Deportiva can stay in the, the, yeah. the next league down. That is a perfect scenario dream, for, dream for Balearic football. Dream, dream that land, is. Actually. Dream land. That is. Talking about Atletico Balearic. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mate. I, oh, I, 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 I don't know what to do. Can we remember last week we said it was a make or break match? If you'd lost badly, I think the manager would have gone. Uh, yeah, he hasn't. He hasn't gone. He, did, he said this week, you know, right now uh, we are struggling for form. 
Um, they, I think he said, yeah, we need to support the fans this week. We'll do our best to get three points. You know, last week, three, two up with six minutes to go. The tank had, had scored an 83rd yeah. minute, what you thought was a winner. And um, they conceded a 93rd minute. I mean, it's like so frustrating. It's the, op- it's the opposite of Mallorca and UD, isn't it, mate? Really, it's a complete yeah. opposite. The fact that you get that 85th, 86th minute uh, goal. I mean, you two one down, you turn it round to three, two. You get an 85th minute goal. You've got five minutes to to hold on, and then you, you can see the last-minute uh, goal to, to just take the draw. So you can imagine what that dressing room was like at the end of that match, can't you, really? You know, I mean, that's the role of yeah. that is as well. But, you know, they've got to turn it around, mate. It's as simple as that. They've got to turn it around, and they've got a home, they've got a home game tomorrow, haven't they? So against Las Rosas, so they've, they've got yeah. to... Mate, they've got to win that game tomorrow. Simple as. They're, they're mm-hmm. already 10 points behind Real Madrid on the mark. They've, you're right. They've, they've got to get a win. Udi Poblense probably got the result of the weekend in from yeah, Mario I, love, I, I love this two, one. 2-2 two, 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 two draw against Real Madrid Castilla. 2-1 up with eight minutes to go. You thought, oh, can they actually finally get this, this win that's been uh, on the back of their shoulders for, for weeks? But unfortunately, Real Madrid Castilla... Uh, um, Got an equaliser with eight minutes to go, uh, which scuppered, um, as I say, Poblenzi getting that first win. But a, str- a draw is still commendable result for for UD right now. Um, you know, they're, they're another one. They're, they're not like Pena, just can't score a goal right now. They're, they're just, you know, they need to get that first win. Uh, they just need they need goals. And you know, let's not forget the Real Madrid Castilla arm, basically Mallorca's youngsters. You take Real Madrid, have got a squad of about twenty five. These are their young younger players with a couple of you know older pros thrown in, but they're managed by Raul, that legendary uh, Real Madrid striker, and uh, they play great football. So, you know, um, it's still a great result for Udi. thoroughbred. I mean, Real Madrid Madrid Castilla are thoroughbreds, mate. I've seen them a couple of times. You know, they lack a bit of confidence because they're inexperienced, but they are thoroughbreds. You know, they're they're million, million pound players there in the making. Uh, I think it's a great result, mate. 2 is a great result. We said last week this could have easily gone the other way. I think it's a great result. You know, going up with ten minutes to go, what, um, going up with ten minutes to go, you think you know this could be the turning point of the season. But you know, with that kind of quality uh, on the pitch and on the bench, by the way, managed by a Real Madrid legend, as we said with Raúl Gonzalez, you know, I still think it's a good result, Richie. One point on the board next game. Filled up the stadium, a thousand people, uh, which was fantastic for Udi. You know, that's, that's a great quick look at uh, Lata Thera Mart. Um, yeah. your, uh, your boys, um, San Jordi. Well, no, no, sorry, Group A, um, a win for um, um, Andrach. Was it Aaron yeah. Andrach against SD Port Manny? Yeah, Port yeah Manny. it was. Yeah, they, 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 beat, they beat us fair and square. I saw the first half last week, that one, mate. We, they beat us fair and square, mate, really. We're, we're a little bit poor. We, I, I said that Port Manny, we've got this great st- striker called Pieri. Um, who was who was magical for the first few games. Since he's been injured, surprise, surprise, we, we are struggling a little bit. And a nice story, one of the, one of our local San Antonio schoolboys today, a guy called uh, Jorge Beltran, who plays for the Juveniles, because Pierre is out, he's been called up to the to the team today, Jorge nice. Beltran. Uh, he's played for the Selection Balearas before as well. So he's got a good pedigree, but he's a local lad. I know him from school, and he's, I think he's going to make his debut for Port Money today with Tafera. So fingers crossed he can make a difference. So uh, remember the name. Yep, uh, Manacor four points behind uh, with the game in hand after beating Sawyer by two goals to nil. There's no games this weekend. It's a holiday weekend here uh, in the Balearics, and um, which means there's no games in Tethera this weekend. Uh, 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 but- uh, Falanix today, mate. Oh, well, you? Yeah, Port Money playing today. I've been, they've already got on the plane this ah. morning, mate. I'll follow them via Twitter. Oh, really? so it's fa- well, Falanix at, when, versus when I, Port Money. There you go. When I looked at the calendar, I, I couldn't see any games coming up uh, Rich, we, we've, anyway, already gone, we, we've already gone through your calendar fails mate so you know it's just another, it's true. another one isn't it's true. it you know? <laughs> true. well listen I have it that there's no games in group B as well where um, uh, Pierre, um, what do they call themselves PE San Jordi yeah. um, who's, what does PE stand for uh, no. you don't know do you no, <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're, play, they're playing next week against Platches and Calvary aren't they so, uh... they are they are yeah that'll be a big game that'll be a big game it's first against second and a quick note for Division and all because um, they're playing well my, my boys team San Francisco not my boys team but the team the club they play for are playing Barcelona today wow um, ma- amazing massive game 
Can't go, unfortunately, because of the COVID rules uh, that the, the club have put on everybody. But you can watch it on Barcelona TV today and on CD San Francisco's Facebook page. It's a four o'clock kickoff this afternoon. I'll definitely be watching the first half uh, yeah. before I go off and see my boys team well, play I'm, later on this afternoon. I'm going to watch San, San, uh, San Antonio, sorry, Port Manning Juvenile. And we've got to get there an hour before because there's only 60 people allowed in the stadium. <laughs> so, oh, really? So we're going an hour before today. So, uh, the, the COVID times, I mean, I'll watch, we can watch from the road if we don't get in, but it'd be nice to get in the stadium. So uh, looking forward to that. Good luck to all our Valerian teams this week. This uh, come out as a podcast and uh, obviously a video cast very shortly. Uh, have a good weekend, Mark. Um, the weather is looking pretty poor, to be honest. It's, it's not a great day to go out and watch football. The bank holiday <laughs> weekend, mate. Of course, the weather's awful. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to Take go. Care. I've got to go, mate. I've got a, a young boy looking at me, staring at me. I've got to go now. So I'll uh, get, get them two hundred and ninety pound boots on, Mark. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Good to speak, Richard. Have a good weekend. Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye.